Hello Dynamic 365 community. Today we'll be talking about two new features that were recently released in application release 8.1 update 20. And these features are global number sequence for customers and vendors. And uh, having that in place, we can actually copy vendors and customers between legal entities. I think this will come in handy if you do any un integration with a uh, external software such as CRM because these products are not legal entity specific and uh, it would be nice to have one member sequence for all legal entities. So going back to the to the functional, uh, the first one is global number sequence for customers and vendors. So to view this functional, in our examples, I'm going to take vendors. So I'm going to go to accounts payables parameters and there under number sequence tab, I will select my vendor account number sequence. And as you can see, number sequence is now set to shared. So that means it will be accessible throughout other legal entities. So if I go back to the USRT legal entity, USRT legal entity has in fact the same number sequence set for vendor accounts. So having this in place in USRT legal entity will allow you to use the same vendor account ID. So the way the functional works, if you read this article deeper step by step there are two levels you can use the number sequence for so level one of number sequence is set in the accounts payable parameters this is the actual one we looked in right so this is the one in addition to that you can set a number sequence per vendor group so if you go to your accounts payable module under vendor groups you'll see a new column called vendor account number sequence so here you have the ability to set up number sequence per vendor group. And why this matters is because when you create a new vendor, depending on the selection you make, the system will use a specific vendor number sequence uh, from the system. So it's a two level hierarchy. If your vendor group has a vendor sequence assigned, the system will use that vendor number sequence. If you don't have that setup per vendor group, the system will use number sequence from the accounts payable parameters form. This is the one. Let's just see this functionality in action. What I will do, I will uh, create a vendor uh, in a USMF legal entity. So to do that, I'm gonna navigate to all vendors, click new. And you will see the small new warning message for the new functional. It says that vendor account number will not be assigned until you click save button. When the vendor group number sequence is used, global number sequence is used for account number and AP parameter page. So that's the hierarchy I was talking about, right? So in our case, I'm not gonna select vendor group that has unique number sequence. In our case, this is next next to, this is the group that has unique number sequence. I'm just gonna use a generic number group. They should take number sequence from the AP parameters form, right? So as you can see, the vendor account is still not generated. It will wait until I click the save button. So as soon as I click the save button, the, the logic will kick in and the system will generate that uh, vendor identification. So I'm gonna name it X vendor. So once I named it X vendor, I'm gonna save it, right? The system will take some time to generate that number sequence. It's generated. It's 003. So how do you copy that? How do you copy this vendor to a different legal entities? The way they did it, it's a little bit gimmicky, but it still works, right? So if I go to a different legal entity, in our case, it's USRT, I'm gonna go to all vendors. I'm not gonna see my X vendor in here for, for me to use, right? So to do, to do the copy vendor, I'm gonna click new. And uh, this is where I have the option to select my vendor group, right? So I'm gonna click next. This is the vendor group I'm gonna use. And these uh, data points such as vendor group, they have to match between legal entities. Otherwise, you're gonna get an error message while copying the vendor. So I'm just gonna start typing X vendor. And the system automatically tells me that there is a party ID with X vendor in the organization. You can actually see by clicking these tabs to which organization the vendor belongs to. So in our case, you can see that this vendor exists in USMF. If I have a tax registration number, it'll also show that's this information, but in my case, I don't have that. So to copy it, you just have to check this existing vendor copy to yes, and then click select. So it will do the trick. You will see that the system will reuse the same vendor account ID as from the USMF legal entity. Overall, I think it's a nice feature. Um, you can use this 
same way for vendors and customers. I'm not gonna showcase the customer scenario because it's exactly the same. You just have to uh, set up the same parameters on customer group and uh, in accounts receivable parameters for global number sequence. I uh, hope you enjoyed the quick video. Uh, until next time, goodbye.